Welcome to a real life Jurassic Park. Cells from an elephant with Indian ancestry are part of a hugely ambitious project to resurrect the woolly mammoth that went extinct between 4,000 and 10,000 years ago. Helming the project to de-extinct the woolly mammoth is Harvard University genetics professor George Church, known for his pioneering work in genome sequencing and gene slicing. Supported by a funding of $15 million dollars, Dr. Church and his team are in the midst of genetically resurrecting the cold resistant elephant as part of their efforts to rehabilitate the Arctic tundra. Dr. Church's project, now under the tutelage of a company called Colossal, is quite reminiscent of the movie Jurassic Park in so much as it uses recovered DNA of a particular species long after its extinction to resurrect it into the modern world. The broad rationale for Dr. Church and his team is to combat climate change based on the idea that a species like the woolly mammoth's return could refill the hole left behind by their extinction and in the process rehabilitate that ecosystem now under existential threat. His method uses the gene editing tool CRISPR-Cas9 in order to splice DNA bits recovered from frozen mammoth specimens into an Asian elephant, the nearest living creature. It is in this context that the cells of an Indian elephant could be useful to create a hybrid which has the features such as long hair needed as a protection against the Arctic cold. Dr. Church answered questions from Mayang Chai reports as part of a recent media call. Thank you. I'm going to go to, um, I hope I say your name correctly, Mayang. Uh, you're perfect. You're spot on. Okay, my name is Mayang Chaya. Uh, I have my own show, Mayang Chaya Reports, which goes to several South Asian and U.S. Indian networks. Uh, I have two questions. I hope that's okay. Yes. Uh, are you in a position to tell us which particular Asian elephant whose genome you are likely to modify? And number two, since you are essentially going to manufacture these woolly mammoths. What about concerns such as a total absence of bonding in the first generation? Um, so the, uh, the, we will use a variety of Asian elephants. We, we have the opportunity of having higher diversity than any elephant herd has ever had because we're not limited to one herd. We can make a, a composite herd from elephants from all over the world and back in time. Uh, so we're, we're not limited the way a, a herd is normally. And we think diversity is probably a good thing. So, so we already have um, multiple elephants uh, cells, uh, cells from different elephants growing in our laboratory and being modified by CRISPR and other technologies. So that's the, that's, uh, the first question. Your second one was about... Uh, okay, the second one is about uh, a near total absence of uh, bonding in the first oh, bonding, generation. Right, right, right. So for bonding, as I'm, uh, we, we are very interested in behavioral aspects of this. We are working with some uh, behavioral uh, experts, and we'd love to have suggestions from others uh, worldwide. Um, there is precedent for, so we will... Uh, uh, they they're so they're very closely related to Asian elephants. These will be basically Asian elephants, and so they can be the first generation. Some of the first generation can be reared uh, in herds of a Asian elephants. So that's number one. We hope to scale up uh, in all in parallel in the first generation. So so some of them might be uh, get limited time with Asian elephants, but we'll but we'll have other um, 
we will study other ways of doing it. And a precedent for this is the California condor, which is rewilded from essentially extinct in the wild um, by, by rearing, uh, by accelerated rearing, uh, getting about four times as many offspring using hand puppets. Um, so that it was allow them to do double clutching uh, t twice a year or something like that. Uh, so there, and there are other precedents for, for um, mechanical surrogates uh, for uh, important social interactions, but, but we're, 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 we're uh, studying options and we're open to suggestions. Thank you. Mayan, did you have another question? Yeah, if you don't mind. Uh, sorry to be so specific, Dr. Church, uh, but uh, is the is the Indian elephant involved in this? Uh, because my viewers in India would be quite interested to know. Uh, yes, I believe uh, that at least one of the elephants that we're currently looking at, uh, sorry, the cells, the elephant cells, is, is of Indian ancestry. We are always interested in getting new uh, uh, cells. Uh, so uh, we're and we're open to, to any uh, input from uh, Indian parks uh, or or, or uh, uh, people that have experience with elephants as uh, laborers as doing uh, work. Um, so so I think uh, I can see some wonderful collaborations with uh, the Indian people. Um, that would be great. How do you propose to build herds once you succeed with the mammoth? So the first step is to, uh, if we have, if we can scale up the uh, artificial wombs, we can make a large number in, in parallel. We need to to uh, have at least some of them uh, are are going to be trained by existing herds, um, and then some will hopefully be trained by um, mechanical um, uh, means. Uh, we, we we need to learn how to do this. Uh, and then, and then we will then uh, hubs. We will grow the the uh, babies at, at at hubs, and that uh, that are carefully located, taking all sorts of things into account. You know, the what what kinds of uh, plants are already growing there, where where people are, and so forth. Put them as far from people as possible, and then they will uh, they will be trained to radiate out along uh, defined pathways from those hubs. That's that's a. Uh, that's our plan, but again, it's subject to change. To add to that, um, how many sort of animals do you think will be needed to sort of see the positive effects of the climate? Well, well we're still doing modeling studies and it depends a great, great deal on behavior and training, but it is known that mammoths and, and, uh, and their relatives uh, would, could, could travel up to two times around the earth uh, in a normal lifetime. Uh, that's not even an extreme, uh, extent. Uh, so if you take that into account and their extreme ease uh, and predilection and enjoyment of knocking down trees, we think that, that, that we could get uh, maybe uh, a, a million square kilometers or maybe three times that uh, eventually um, with uh, hundreds, maybe low thousands, uh, uh, which is well within, I think, the kind of scale that uh, Ben and his team are, are planning. Now, there were many, many more than that historically, but it's not clear that we need that in order to deal with, say, 1%, 5% of the, of the Arctic uh, land. So, um, so we look at this project from a long-term perspective, right? And, and this is a, a decades-long project in terms of uh, full Arctic rewilding. Because remember, our goal isn't to just bring back, you know, cold-tolerant elephants or functional mammoths. Our goal is actually to, you know, uh, be successful in in releasing interbreedable herds into the Arctic and uh, for for uh, Arctic rewilding. And so, you know, our goal is to have our first calves in, in the first you know four to six years, which which is aggressive. But like like any large engineering project, timelines are uh, subject to slipping some. But you know, we that, that, that's what our that's what our initial goals are, right? And then from that, you know, uh, you know, elephants have shown that they can start, um, you know, knocking down trees and, 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 and being pretty productive in a habitat, you know, within, you know, six, six or seven years. So, you know, I think that, you know, our, probably the shortest timeline that we'll see this is, you know, probably 12 to 13 years in terms of, uh, you know, applying it back, you know, uh, into the uh, Arctic. 
Um, and, 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 that, and that's our timeline. It may slip a little bit based on, you know, um, uh, the, some of the engineering challenges, but uh, as, as George has noted before, uh, the science is, 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 you know, mostly solved, if not all solved. And we're really just looking at engineering challenges and, and how can we produce enough coal tolerant elephants at scale uh, to really make the impact that, that we're looking for. Anyway, there is, uh, we, we uh, since both the Asian elephant and the African elephants uh, are endangered species, we're trying not to interfere with their reproduction. Also, we, in order to scale up, as Ben has said, in parallel, we'd like to get a large generation the first year rather than going through a slow uh, uh, reproduction that, that takes so long to get sexual maturity. So we'd like to have a um, scale up via uh, artificial wombs. Uh, we are uh, testing that initially in mice and then we'll transfer it over to elephants. Um, but I think that answers your question as to whether this would be risky for the, the mother. We have de-risked the surrogate method quite a bit in our studies on, on making pigs for, uh, uh, as organ donors, but we don't think, we think we're going to do the elephants, uh, that part of the elephant project a little differently than the way we did the pig project. Hi there, Shane Stranahan. Yeah, my name is Shane Stranahan. I'm a host uh, of Fault Lines on Radio Sputnik based in Washington, D.C. I had a, uh, I'll try to keep it to one question, but maybe it'll be an A and B sort of thing. Thank you. And by the way, George Church, Mr. Church, an honor to be able to, to ask you this stuff. For one thing, uh, beyond woolly mammoths, what other species of megafauna are you looking at potentially rearing in the long run? And then uh, are you considering at this stage moving from megafauna to microfauna? In other words, from these very large animals to much smaller ones that may be extinct, may have been vital keystone species in ecosystems. Uh, I just answer a couple of technical and then hand it over to Ben. Uh, I, I'm uh, we're avoiding really small species and predators for the time being because just we're worried about uh, perceptions and controlling them, and you know. Well, the large ones, we can track them and, and they're slow to reproduce. And I think they're just a safer bet for initially, but we are laser focused on, on uh, the Arctic elephants. We are not, it's not in, in our, any of our reasonably short to long-term plans to do, do others, but we're working with Revive and Restore and I'll let Ben uh, describe that. Yeah, we work, we're, you know, as, as I think we've mentioned maybe on another, uh, interviews. We're working closely with an incredible scientific advisory board and different conservation nonprofits, both you know, in in, uh, uh, in genetic rescue, like like uh, the great folks uh, like Ryan and Stuart at Revival Restore, who have been working on this project for quite some time and working with George for you know a, a decade plus on it. Um, and, and they've got an incredible list if you go to their site and look at some of the things that they're focused on from a uh, from a de extinction. You know, I think to, to George's other point. Um, you know, we're myopically focused on on Arctic elephants and, and, and the cold tolerant attributes, um, you know, to create functional woolly mammoths. And, and, and I think that in turn, um, you know, we'll probably long term think about other large megafauna that can help with Arctic rewilding that we can uh, we can apply those um, same traits to because outside of the rewilding aspects of this in, in the uh, um, uh, fixing the degraded uh, uh, ecosystems of the Arctic. Another thing that's really important to us is species extension. So how can we take the uh, elephant lineage and give them a home where they're not currently in combat with um, urbanization and, 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 you know, put them in lo locations that they can not just help from a climate perspective, but also can help from a, you know, species preservation perspective of the, of the you know, of, of, the, of the elephant lineage. And I think that that same kind of uh, application could probably be applied to rhinos, but we're not actively working on, um, you know, any additional uh, megafauna or microfauna, um, you know, at this time. But there's also great work being done globally around, you know, um, uh, other species uh, by Revive and Restore and, and some of these other um, uh, groups. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm going to ask Bert Gruling's question for him because his microphone is not working. Um, and Bert is from Germany. Uh, what are your main arguments for the revival of the mammoth and what are sort of the biggest hurdles? So uh, we're, we're not really reviving the mam mammoth, uh, but mammoth genes. And we've already revived two of the mammoth genes that have been shown in the laboratory to confer cold resistance. 
Um, uh, the major uh, uh, barriers we think uh, are mostly engineering scale up issues right now. Uh, probably the biggest uncertainty is our we we've, uh, is engineering uh, endometrial cells of uh, uh, artificial wombs uh, for the embryo to develop. We we have we've gotten very good in the last few years of. Uh, reprogramming stem cells into a variety of cells, including vascularized uh, uh, tissues. Um, but we, we have to show that this works uh, very well in mice before we extend it to larger mammals, including the elephant, uh, soon after that. 